Good evening, guys. I wanted to welcome you to our December 2nd Wednesday Bible study. Um, I have a few prayer requests that I want to share with you before we get into our lesson. Uh, and as I'm doing that, if you would like to turn to Romans chapter 5, where I'm going to begin, as well as uh, Psalm 129. We've deviated from our march through the Bible and our attempt to find Jesus in every book of Scripture, uh, just temporarily, I wanted to spend some time in the Psalms. And I wanted to spend some time looking at the Song of Ascents because I, I believe they are very important for us to focus on in time of adversity, in time of discouragement, in time of understanding how important it is to worship and praise God, even in spite of calamity. See, the Song of Ascents were songs that the Israelites sung as they were on their way up to Jerusalem to worship Yeshua. And the word, the name Yeshua, actually means Savior or Deliverer. So it's very important for us to focus on those things uh, as we go to into our last month of 2020. Some of you are jumping up and down because of that, but I don't think it's it's necessarily a good thing to wish your life away, but I think it's best to make the most of each and every situation that we find ourselves in, regardless of our situation. So um, again, our prayer request, please continue to pray for Diane Postalweight, who has been diagnosed with coronavirus. Um, continue to pray for Betty McPhee as she is in the Genesis uh, Healthcare Center. Also, we want to lift up Chuck Stevens as he has been admitted to Ruby Hospital. He's having some severe heart issues, so please keep Chuck and that family in your prayers. Uh, Jim Resler, of course, continues to go through his treatments uh, in his oxygenated chamber five days a week, and so continue to remember him and Stacy. Also, Stacy's sister, Sophia, who's dealing with lung cancer, continue to pray for her. Don't forget to pray for Becky McCoy uh, as she's recovering from a coronavirus, as well as uh, Sammy Jo Wilson. Uh, looks as if we're going to be into 2021 before she's able to receive uh, the kidney that she uh, desperately needs. Um, also continue to pray for Summers' mother. Uh, this is uh, Signa Cook, that's Summer Bogus' mother. Uh, in her rehabilitation, that all goes well there. We also made mention of Michelle Shear. She is a member of the Morgantown Church of Christ, and as it is, uh, she is having some extensive procedures done for pancreatic cancer. Those started yesterday, so please keep her in your prayers, uh, her and her family, as she is at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore receiving those treatments. Also, I received a message from David Busey, and he wishes to thank each and every one of us for prayers on behalf of his wife, Vicki. Many of you know Vicki, but because of her health, she's not been able to worship with us for the last several years. And so David sent me a message, and he wanted me to pass it on to you all, that he is very thankful for the prayers that he's received on her behalf. And he would also uh, appreciate it if we would pray for their son, Lindsay. Uh, Lindsay was admitted to Ruby Hospital yesterday evening after suffering from a seizure once he got off work. So please continue to pray for all of those folks, uh, as well as our free market that's coming up this coming Sunday. If you could pray for the success of that. Actually, guys, if you're able to come out and help, we could certainly use um, manpower, lady power as well. Uh, uh, we will begin at 8 o'clock, but if we could have folks show up at around 7.30, that will be very helpful to get things finalized and ready to go for folks to show up to receive uh, the products that we have uh, set up. And a special thanks to Faith Ann. She has been working tirelessly uh, putting everything together for this, uh, this year's free market. Doing a little bit different in that we are setting up uh, by appointment for folks to come in so that we can maintain social distancing, so that we can honor uh, our governor's request for social distancing. So before we get started with uh, the Bible lesson for this evening, let's begin with a word of prayer. 
Father, thank you for loving us and blessing us the way that you do. Father, our hearts and our minds are with all of those that we've made mention of who are struggling with um, uh, with illness or um, surgeries, up and coming um, medical procedures that are going to be done to those of whom we've made mention. And I just pray, Father, that you bless them in a special way and encourage them this day as they are facing these things because, Father, it's never easy uh, to go through many of the procedures that these folks are in need of. And so I just pray that you bless and encourage each one. Father, I pray that you remind us of how important it is to remain steadfast to you in our perseverance, shrouded in hope, and also encompassed in humility, which we're going to be learning about this evening. Father, help us to appreciate the Song of Ascents, the songs that your people sang as they were on their way to worship you so many decades ago. Just encourage us, Father, this day we pray in Christ. Amen. The Christian life isn't the easiest to live, but it is the most rewarding, and we need to appreciate that. I mean, so many attempts have been made to thwart the advances of Christianity, and guys, every single one of them have failed. He told us, Jesus told us not to be surprised when discouragement comes upon us. He even told us, he, he even told his disciples, said, you know, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the difficulties that this life has to offer. And so the one that we turn to in time of discouragement, in time of distress, reminds us that he's already overcome the world and that we can do the same thing if we attach ourselves to him. Romans chapter 5 is... It's, it's almost, it's, it's so ironic how Paul wrote these words. It's almost as if he read the Psalms 129 through 130 prior to writing these words down. Or it could be that the Spirit led him to do that. Be that as it may, they mirror each other so incredibly. Paul says, therefore, since we've been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. More than that, he says, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance or perseverance. And endurance or perseverance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope never leads to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who's been given to us. I want you to notice those progressions that Paul made mention of in Romans chapter 5 because I'm going to start out with Psalm 129 in this Song of Ascents and I want you to see exactly how that correlates with what Paul wrote centuries later. Greatly they have afflicted me from my youth, the psalmist says. Let Israel now say, Greatly they have afflicted me from my youth, yet they have not prevailed against me. The plowers plowed upon my back, they made their long furrows. The Lord is righteous, he has cut the cords of the wicked. May all who hate Zion be put to shame and turned backwards. Let them be like the grass on the housetops, which withers before it grows up, with which the reaper does not fill his hand, nor the binder of sheaths his arms. Nor do those who pass by, blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless the name of the Lord. Of all the words used to describe God's people, the very first word out of the psalmist's mouth comes from the word perseverance. Perseverance. God's people are tough. God's people endure. For centuries, those who belong to the world have waged war against truth. And guys, they've yet to win and they never will. 
you cannot squelch Christianity. You cannot destroy Christianity. And so in order to keep on keeping on, to have that stick to itiveness, so to speak, we need, as God's people, perseverance. We need to overcome any obstacle that stands in our way, to constantly strive to stand firm in the face of opposition and to come out on the other side victorious. We have examples all through scripture of folks who have persevered. Um, we've looked at Joseph, we've looked at David, uh, look at the Apostle Paul, and even Christ Jesus, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and look forward to what his reward was once all of that was over. Paul went so far, far as to say, you know, I fought the good fight, I have finished the course, I've kept the faith, Henceforth, there is reserved for me a crown of righteousness that the faithful judge will give to me on that day, but not to me only, but also to those who love his appearing. That promise is also to us who look forward to God's appearing. It wasn't as if Paul was naive. He wasn't naive. He knew what he was up against. He knew he faced severe opposition, and yet he remained faithful until death. And so the picture of what the psalmist is painting for us here in Psalm 129 is one of severe persecution being brought upon God's people. And, it, and it's as if uh, Israel, which is the person of faith, is lying uh, face down, stretched out, uh, prone, and the enemies hitch up their oxen and their plows and they begin cutting long furrows into the back of Israel. There's long gashes cut into the skin and, and the flesh and back and forth systematically like a farmer working a field. They go back and forth. And just imagine the pain inflicted on the one who's having this done to them. And yet, it's almost as if all of a sudden all of that pain is gone. It's just, it's just gone. The oxen are still trampling back and forth. The ones behind the plow are still shouting for the oxen to move, but the plows have ceased to work. And the reason is God has ripped the harnesses of the evil plowman to shreds. He's taken that away so that they don't have the ability to furrow on the back of Israel any longer. They have nothing with which to move forward because God has rescued them. And the psalmist then uh, concludes uh, his illustration by giving a similar truth. Opposition to the people is like grass in shallow ground. It reminds me of the parable of the sower in the New Testament where some of the seed uh, fell and was scattered on the rocky soil. The seed would sprout and grow, but the grass would never last because... The, the soil was so thin that it wouldn't allow the roots to grow deep enough to sustain. And so there's no reason for the harvesters to come because there wasn't anything to glean. There wasn't anything left. There wouldn't be anybody coming to say the evil people who've come against the Israelites have received a great harvest. And I would imagine that illustration brought a lot of smiles to the Israelites who were under this severe persecution. Guys, even today, for those who believe Christianity can be silenced, I'm here to tell you it cannot be done. Folks for centuries have tried to silence Christianity. They've tried to squelch it. They've tried to kill it. But you cannot kill something that God has created. It's just not possible. The Word of God will provide uh, abide forever it will last forever and so in regard to this song of the sense in psalm 129 the word we derive from this psalm is perseverance perseverance you know postage stamps have increased in price over the years and i know some folks are pretty upset about that but you need to give them credit where credit is due. It's because postage stamps have one attribute that I believe we would do good to emulate. They stick to one thing, 
until they get to their destination. And that's a good bit of advice for us as God's people. We need to stick to the one until we arrive at our destination as well. The psalmist then moves on to a song of hope in Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for the Lord. And in his word, I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman for the morning, more than the watchman for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. A Christian man or a Christian woman who stands firm in the face of adversity does so to the glory of their God. It's not if we will face adversity in this life. It's how we're going to handle it when we do. When we look for ways to find hope, we don't find it in self-help pamphlets. We don't find it in horoscopes or in soothsayers. It can not be found in the stock market. It cannot be found in the world's economy. Nor does our hope come from the CDC or the WHO or even the White House. The only place our hope as Christians come from is God himself. And don't be fooled into believing that suffering doesn't happen to people of faith because it has all through the annals of time. If you believe that there's a quick fix to life's problems, you better think again. Guys, we're going to suffer in this life. It's going to be that way until we draw our final breath. And so the answer to suffering isn't to find the latest drug to get us through it. It isn't to find uh, the latest quote. It isn't to find self-help books or things that are going to help us endure. What we need to understand is that when we go through suffering, just like the psalmist said, we need to turn it over to the Lord. All the suffering that you read about here is spoken in the form of a prayer, which means that God can be not only trusted to hear our prayers, but to answer them as well. His name is used no less than eight times in this particular psalm. So he's likened to the one who forgives sins. He is likened to the one who comes to those who wait and hope in him. He is characterized by steadfast love and by overwhelming redemption and as one who will rise up to redeem Israel. In spite of whatever calamity has come into your life, be it uh, job loss, be it financial difficulties, illness, family issues, um, my loving wife just was informed that um, uh, she will be um, let go from her job the 4th of December because of the coronavirus. And she has dedicated 24 years of her life to the American Cancer Society. And we by no means uh, disbelieve in uh, what ACS stands for. We will still stand behind the organization. We will still encourage those who have been diagnosed with cancer. And we will still encourage the mission set forth by the American Cancer Society. But because of the coronavirus, Mary has had to uh, be relieved of her duties there. And it's been quite dramatic. It's been very hard on her because this is a, an organization, this is a cause that she believes deeply in. And so calamity is going to invade our lives. It's going to riddle us from time to time. But we need to understand that God is not indifferent to our suffering, guys. God knows Everyone, everything, every situation, he even knows when a sparrow falls to the ground. Don't you think that he would care for us even more? 
And the answer to that question, of course, is yes. Our God is our rock. He is our hope. He is still the one who listens to the cries of his people and who answers accordingly. Weeping may last for a night, but indeed joy comes in the morning. It's always the darkest before the dawn, right? So we wait, and we wait just like the watchman in the night. We wait and watch for the dawn to come, and it does come. It always returns without fail. I believe that the 130th Psalm is one of the most important Psalms in all of the Songs of Ascents. And, and the reason it's probably the most important one of all is because while it doesn't show us what we're going to suffer, it convinces us of how important it is in regard to how we suffer. I mean, we can suffer triumphantly. We can know that all things work together for the good to those who love the Lord, to those who are called according to his purpose. Or we can suffer negatively. We can grovel in despair. And in all honesty, that's only going to heighten our pain. It's only going to make matters worse. But the choice is ours. We can pray knowing that God will get us through it. And then in the end, we will be triumphant. Or we can despair and become so discouraged that we forget who we are and whose we are. The third and last uh, Song of Ascent in this particular section addresses the subject of humility. Psalm 131, our last Song of Ascent this evening. O Lord, my heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great or too marvelous for me. But I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. O oh, Israel, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. So the last subject that we're going to be discussing this evening has to do with humility. Humility. Sometimes those lessons are the hardest learned, and it seems as if the older we get, the more humbled we are. If you want to allow something to deteriorate, just leave it alone. That has to do with a vehicle, that has to do with a house, that has to do with a lot of man-made things, but if you want to see it go from... Um, organization to disorganization just don't mess with it just don't touch it and it will simply rot into the ground i was up hunting at the farm the other day and i noticed that there was an old chicken house up there and although it was made out of rough cut lumber the upper side of it had completely fallen in and the rest is soon to follow I recently read a story about a man who was growing a rose bush, and he thought, you know, my neighbors always have such beautiful rose bushes, so what I'm going to do this year is I'm not going to trim mine back. I'm just going to let it grow out as much as it can so that I can enjoy beautiful roses, and I just want them to take over the whole place. And just the opposite happened. His neighbors still had beautiful roses, and they were huge, but unfortunately, the vines, the branches, received the nutrients needed to produce healthy roses. And so what happened was he didn't have very many big roses. As a matter of fact, they were quite small. But he had a lot of branches that had, it was parasitic. They took all the nutrients for themselves and didn't share it with the fruit that they were supposed to produce. Jesus spoke of that very thing in John 15 when he talked about the vines and the branches. And so it's necessary for us to be pruned. It's important for us to be trimmed back, to cut back. All of those things are necessary in order for us to maintain healthy growth. If we think we can just allow things to grow wild without allowing a vine dresser to come along and, and trim up what needs trimmed, 
we're, we are in for one unfruitful season after another. And humility, humility doesn't come from trying harder to be humble. Humility comes from allowing our vine dresser access to our branches. And yet far too many of us try to control how much the vine dresser prunes. You can't control that. Not if you are in subjection to the vine dresser. He can trim away as just as much as he needs in order to produce fruit. Some he will trim and he will discard on the burn pile because it's not producing fruit. And he's not doing this to be cruel. He's doing this to be merciful so that we continue to thrive, so that we continue to grow, so that we continue to produce more fruit. And just because we're called to be humble servants doesn't mean we're to be clingy, doesn't mean that we're, we're supposed to be insecure uh, and infantile either. Humble servants may display childlike characteristics toward God, but they're anything uh, child, they're anything from childish in their behavior. They don't act like children. They don't um, pout if they don't get their way. Um, they're simply subservient to their God. Guys, God isn't here to cater to our every whim. And some people sometimes fall into that consumer mentality that they believe that God should be there for their beck and call. And it's not that God doesn't hear, and it's not that he doesn't care, and it's not that he doesn't answer. It's just that he has his own way of doing things and his ways are much higher than our ways and we need to trust that that is true. And our fight isn't against flesh and blood. Our fight is against the wickedness, the spiritual wickedness that resides in the heavenly places. Um, if you try to go up against that wickedness on your own or with a wishy-washy faith, you are going to suffer defeat. You need God's presence in your life. You need the Holy Spirit in your life. You need his power pushing you forward, allowing you to defeat those things which work against you. God didn't call us to be wimps. He didn't. Uh, some folks feel, are feeling overwhelmed right now. Um, we are not overwhelmed as God's people. We are overcomers. We are victorious beyond compare. It's just in how we look at this through the mind of faith and how sometimes we need to reframe how we're looking at things. Speaking of humility, it is not weakness. Meekness is not weakness, neither is humility. It's reserved confidence in God delivering us from the snare of the evil one. It means being sure of where our strength lies, and it certainly does not lie within us. It lies within the spirit who resides in us. Philip Brooks made a comment one time. He said, the true way to humility is not to stoop until you're smaller than yourself, but to stand at your real height against some higher nature that will show you what the real smallness of your greatness actually is. I think that's a great quote. C.S. Lewis once said, humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's more of thinking of yourself less. And Lewis is absolutely right. And so there's the next three songs of ascents. Ascents, moving upward, A-S-C-E-N-T, moving upward as the Israelites were on their way up to Jerusalem to worship God. 129, perseverance. Psalm 130, on hope, I pray to God and wait for what he will say and what he will do. And Psalm 131, on humility, I've kept my feet on the ground. I don't know if you noticed or not, but there's one thing that I appreciated as we have kind of parked to the side of the road here and have um, revisited these songs of a sense. Um, but as we are making our way toward the throne room of God, none of the desires that are mentioned in these Psalms can be done without supernatural help. It's no different than the fruits of the Spirit. We cannot obtain fruits of the Spirit 
on our own. These are fruits of the Spirit, not fruits of ourselves. And so the only way that we can do that is through submission, through belief, through prayer, through hope, perseverance, and humility. And God will provide. In our tendency to fall prey to discouragement, perseverance is impossible without divine help. Through our inclination to despair, hope would be impossible without the shed blood of Jesus being poured out as an adequate sacrifice for our sin. And lastly, because of our tendency to be prideful, uh, egotistical, selfish, whatever the case may be, humility would be a pipe dream were it not for Christ Jesus showing us the importance of washing other people's feet as seen in John 13. In regard to humility, maybe you've heard about the man who wrote two bestsellers. The first one was called Humility and How I Obtained It. <laughs> the second book was called The Ten Most Humble Men in the World and How I Chose the Other Nine. Humility is sometimes hard to grasp for some people, but I can assure you it can be attained through the power of the Holy Spirit. Guys, let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for these psalms. Because in time of discouragement, in time of distress, Father, in time of disillusionment, we need clarity. We need encouragement. We need hope. We need to know how to persevere. And the Bible gives us those words for those of whom have gone on before us for our example and for our help in overcoming whatever it is that besets us. And so I pray for your strength and your encouragement and your wisdom. Father, I also pray for an up-and-coming free market that's going to happen Saturday. I pray for much success. Pray for those who are going to come out from the Whitehall Church and help us as we uh, do fundamental preparations and as we get ready to serve the people in this community. Thank you over and again for blessing us with more than enough of the things that we need so that we can share with those around us. We love you. We love your spirit and we love your son. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Guys, hope to see you Saturday and then Sunday for our worship together.